today's nugget section will be a little controversial i'll talk about my views on why i think the global markets are heading towards a really chaotic phase hi everyone welcome to the episode of 23rd september first a news that is not very public in india india has been lapping up silver and gold like anything especially in august at the rate we are going we are likely to consume 65 percent of the silver mined globally in this year and that is on top of the increased volume of gold imports as well and one fantastic part on the part of government is the currency is under check in fact it is getting stronger only this could be one benefit of the huge qip wave which is going on where a lot of dollar is coming in going to rbi and that is being used to buy silver and gold now while gold is strategic silver may be the ev theory one ev battery consumes nearly one kilogram of silver back to the markets today was another day ruled by bulls the greens got stronger today in fact very few with deep reds today auto came back also the oil pack was firing in all cylinders beers also consisted of stocks that had to pause for a breath or it look at the tail it is really really small the biggest underperformer today was software followed by chemicals now chemicals can be understood as profit booking but software is general underperformance this is where software is in the last two weeks and this is where banking is in the last two weeks strong performances by banks and electrical utilities in the last two weeks in the larger sectors today's hero however was oil and gas followed by telecom today it was all the players firing everyone who was on lower circuit last week they also joined the party bharti of course does not want to pause at all every day the 52 week high is being stretched more and more the p is now nearing 100 interestingly in terms of p there is only one reasonable company which is indus tower because vodafone does not have any eps volumes of indus tower and vodafone were pretty high seems like good short covering happened today and the it pack continued to sell today also tcs sixth or seventh consecutive red day the volumes in it are indicative of very low participation people are not throwing the stocks on the streets but no one is coming out to buy either today's graphs were really really optimistic nifty opened with a gap up went up continuously continuously created all time highs and closed nearly at the day's high same with bank nifty closed nearly at an all time high reliance half percent up market will take it icici bank cooled down a little however hdfc bank more than compensated up another percent look at airtel's gap up opening and then continuous up closing at an all-time high nearly hul continuous up somewhere in the day it made another all-time high the lagards tcs infosys let's check the trading ranges very narrow range for nifty half percent no big trouble from the bears for nearly whole day our nifty is now getting in the overbought zone maybe one prick is needed this week to let out the excess pressure let's check bank nifty as well trading range of 406 points now as the indices go up the trading ranges increased also are low in percentages bank nifty also had no trouble with the bears today completely closing at an all-time high let's check if bank nifty is overbought yes right now it is overbought note that this indicator does not mean bank nifty has to come down for the overbought to become reasonable today kotak mahindra joined the party opened with a gap up went up continuously indus end was down today public sector banks joined the party bank of Rosa, pnb up the biggest rally perhaps came from sbi up two and a half percent irfc corrects one percent nearly every day on an average today pfc and bajaj finance slightly up defense pack the big boys hl and bl were up today the consumption pack was good as usual hl made another high itc up nestle up titan up colgate made another high alcohol stocks were up as well there is some action going on the united breweries front i need to add them to the consumption pack dsc made another high today kevin tech has been going up every day up three percent today also cams also up three and a half percent nippon amc up four and a half percent so investment banking still going strong the outcome of all the movement nifty up half percent bank nifty up another half percent look at the trend of bank nifty reminds me of the nifty run we had two weeks back which was a record nifty it is in no mood to break any record energy up 1.2 percent next 51.6 percent auto 1.6 percent these are sectors not stocks FIs were missing from action today 404 if you are an IT person you would understand the joke DIA is 1023 crores between the FIs and DIA 35,000 crore plus has been bought this month the leaders are FIs not DIA's 
एच डी एफ सी बैंक हैज टू लिस्टिंग कमिंग अप एच डी बी विच इज देयर माइक्रो फाइनेंस आर्म एंड एच डी एफ सी क्रेडिला विच इज देयर एजुकेशनल लोन आर्म दिस शुड मीन सम अपसाइड फॉर एच डी एफ सी बैंक बट दीज आर नॉट वेरी लार्ज कंपनीज कम्पेयर टू एच डी एफ सी बैंक साइज ऑल्सो वॉज आर न्यूज पब्लिश टूडे बाय बिजनेस टूडे फोर्टी टू फिफ्टी परसेंट अपसाइड इन पी एस यू बैंक एंड इफ यू आर फॉलोइंग मी ऑन ट्विटर रेगुलर अपडेट्स आर कमिंग आउट टूडे आई मैंशन all the indices stocks which had made fresh highs in the middle of the day in the top 10 airtel and hul did that today the biggest outperformers were airtel sbi and hul hul now has been up for five straight days and hdfc bank which was lagging in all races now it has been up for four straight days us markets have opened in the green apple and microsoft are slightly negative gold is up silver corrected a bit infosys adr is looking slightly weak bitcoin is now trading firmly above 60000 and my gut feeling is both bitcoin and gold are going to run a lot silver also is looking optimistic just that the demand for silver globally is very low especially among retail investors rupee is now hovering around 83.5 for ages it was stuck just a shy short of 84 today good market bet 16 stocks down 34 up atel was the topper followed by sbi hdfc hul mnm what was down icher motors asian paints infosys tcs icici bank while asian paints and icici bank deserved a break tcs and infosys are in general underperforming right now next 15 9 down 41 up even better market bet adani total is at the top today in terms of percentage gain 6% canara bank gale bank of baroda dlf they were next two of them are public sector banks which i mentioned earlier what was down burger paints irfc dabur marico bajaj investments coming to individual sectors ntpc up 1% in the energy pack the overall pack was looking really good green today the adani pack was firing in all cylinders tata power up 2.3% today oil and gas was also looking really good volumes however not very high mrpl continues to be in red my feeling is very soon we'll have one day which i'll call reliance day we just need one good news consumption pack was mixed back today but the leaders itc pack hul they were in the green the greed increased from 50 to 51 aerospace was up because hl and bl were up automobile a sea of green maruti and tata motors are the only non green stocks very little correction in varun beverages but the alcohol stocks were doing pretty well asian paints corrected pretty light up a bit coal india up profit booking in construction and engineering Cement pack was rock solid. Grassim only corrected a bit, and Grassim has been going down a lot. Adani pack was on fire today. Adani enterprise also up 1.2 percent. Trend up 2 percent. Home building was green today. Insurance pack was fantastic today. Even LIC was up. Investment banking was mixed bag. HDFC, AMC, and Nippon were up a lot. So was Tata Investment. In fact, Tata Investment was actually up 6-7 percent, and then it cooled down. Heavy machinery looking good. Metals were mostly strong. real estate really strong dlf macro tech godrej this is contrary to what i'll talk about in the nugget section however look at kalyan jewelers 5% up so was aditya birla titan up 0.6% no sales today but it was an investment day i made an investment in an etf small one to start with but this kick starts the swp part for me i thought that i'll get out of the over planning mode and start some action if i want to change the funds i'll change them later i also bought tata investments but then it corrected about 2 3% from the level that i bought i also bought bank of india i actually wanted to buy indian bank but that was already up 6% and bank of india was not up that much next few days i might reduce a bit on software i'm not getting a very good feeling about the sector especially with the currency getting stronger and i might increase a bit on the public sector banks time for the nuggets i'll talk about some of the countries first china so asset manager are giving up on china funds are exiting china chinese economy facing deep slowdown and ray dalio right now is among the biggest pessimist just at the time i was shooting china had cut 14 day reverse repo rate this is to inject liquidity as the economy slows down this is a news from 2 3 months earlier where china had slowed down on gold import significantly a lot of people are feeling that china is not doing enough to actually come out of the glut they are in they are right now more busy kicking every dog on the street germany is among the top 5 economies by gdp and germany has been going down for a while energy crisis interest rates global uncertainty structural issues supply chain disruptions anything in the world bad happens germany is impacted they have never recovered in fact most of the eu has not recovered from covid 19 low birth rate in the g7 germany will be the only country which will shrink in the size of the economy 
UK, I don't know since when has been in a recession. They just don't acknowledge it. Inflation, Brexit, labor shortage, taxes, energy prices, national health services. The colonial money has been running out for more than a decade and they have really no idea how to make money in general. The government can no longer provide free food and free services. France is facing challenges of its own labor shortage, corporate bankruptcies, inflation that is throughout EU across the globe in fact monetary tightening low productivity employment high debt insufficient innovation japan has been the worst probably for decades stagnation export production problems aging corporate governance taxation investments i don't even think japan wants to come out of where they have been for three decades completely happy in the situation they are in now coming to India, I have talked about many factors in the past. I have mentioned about auto in several episodes. I have said that real estate may be the next, but the data is not there. Today, I tweeted about it as well. Real estate sector, it's official now. Artificial bull run of real estate is over. Now, people who have bought real estate recently will not agree with this article. They will say this is not an authentic handle and this data is not correct. And I am not going to attempt at all to prove that right or wrong. But as per the report I saw, top 9 cities report 11% decline in new launches and sales down 18% in Q3 on average. Hyderabad where I live, that is impacted most, 42% down. Bangalore, Kolkata, Pune, Chennai, Mumbai, Thane, Hyderabad, Bangalore top the list. Exception is Delhi NCR which is expected to show growth as estimated by this report. If auto and real estate are not doing well, the economy cannot do well. Beat metal, beat construction, beat cement. Even jobless claims will increase in India because there is mass employment under these industries. The indirect effect will of course be on banking and that will have a ripple impact across the economy. This creates a case for reducing the interest rates at a rapid pace in India now. The challenges in India, unemployment, low per capita income, poor infrastructure, inequality in wealth distribution, fiscal imbalance and poor education. None of these problems can be solved because we will not even acknowledge these as problems at all. These have all been solved. So this indicator is not applicable in India at all. Now I have not created a slide for US because we know all about US. The inflation, the currency printing, the elections. I cover that nearly on a daily basis. Across the globe there are only two or three solutions to these problems. One is governments have to generate more money than they spend which is not possible literally in any country right now. If you increase taxes, you will lose elections. The economies are not growing for people to pay more taxes in general because of growth. Most governments are out of stuff to sell, including the companies that governments owned erstwhile. India still has some left. They are diminishing at a very rapid pace, however. You can take debt and most countries are doing it. US is the largest debtor in the world. Or you could print money. This is the happiest move for most governments right now globally. Every government is printing be it US, be it India and I have covered that in many many episodes. This is what is taking markets up. This is what is taking inflation up to absurd levels to an extent that most governments have to change the formula for calculating and reporting inflation numbers and I am not talking about India alone. The immediate side effect which I see in the coming months and years, individuals, companies in context of countries like India states and in fact countries will default. Countries have taken loan from China, they cannot repay. China is taking over significant ports and other facilities. We have seen many times during recessions, individuals and companies default. So homes, cars of people are confiscated by banks. When companies default, they are taken over cheaply by their rivals or maybe investors like Warren Buffet, they come over. States, in any case in India, we are going to change a lot in terms of how states are run. But that's a political discussion, not for this channel. What will all this lead to? Slightly scary picture, this is cannibalization. This has happened always since humans have existed. If you look at colonization times also, that was in some ways cannibalization. So-called developed countries are now cannibalized countries, India and many others, taking everything including resources away from not just decades but centuries. In today's terms, if you recall 2008, when banks were going bankrupt, the US government took them over, nationalized them literally for free and few years later, they sold them for a hefty profit. India, if you look, Yes Bank, SBI bought a major stake and now they are selling it for a good profit. Many companies which have defaulted have been sold under the new bankruptcy law to other corporates at a very cheap rate with loans forgiven or reduced. It is called haircut in political circles. All that is cannibalization where a significant population or corporates are losing what they owned till the time they were cannibalized. This is going to happen at all levels. Individuals will call it tax, corporates will call it MNA 
or hostile takeover. Four countries I already mentioned who can't afford to pay debt, they will be taken over directly or indirectly. And this is how the wealth will be taken over from about 70-80% of the population across the world including countries and be concentrated with the top 15-20% starting totally a new era. I'll leave you now with a very controversial thought. We have always been unhappy that middle class does not get much. What if I tell you there is nothing called middle class? There is only a rich class and there is a poor class. In poor class, there are some people who want to be rich, who are working hard or at the top layer of poor. They don't want to be called poor. They themselves call them middle class. But there is nothing called middle class. Thanks for watching. Hope this was interesting and useful. I'll see you tomorrow.